Hi everybody, my name is Renee and I'm the Executive Director and the Educator here at the Sexual Health Centre for Cumberland County. This week uh, across our social media platforms we're talking about decision making and sexual health is filled with decisions. Uh, should I be in this relationship? Should I not be in this relationship? Should I have sex? Am I ready for sex? Uh, what kind of protection should I use? Should I leave this relationship? And when I was thinking about um, the topic of decision making, I thought of no better person to ask to join us for a chat than Shannon Hardy. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Renee. It's so nice to see you virtually. Um, Shannon is a registered social worker, a clinical trauma specialist, a trauma-informed content specialist and consultant. Uh, she is the recipient of the 2020 Sexlence Award uh, for her fantastic contrib contributions to sexual health. Shannon is a clinical therapist and I've also seen Shannon around in the past uh, when Shannon was working as a sexual health educator with Venus Envy located in downtown Halifax. So Shannon, hi, welcome. Thanks for joining us for this, uh, for this chat. Yeah, so let's talk about decision decision making and I can just imagine that in in your vast experience in this area that you have a lot of folks have probably come to you struggling with a lot of tough decisions yeah um I'm like yes yes they have uh you know you you <laughs> just question. mentioned Venus Envy it is a big question but <laughs> you know you mentioned Venus Envy and you know their people would often come in because it was very much a safe space, you know, and they knew that they could, they could talk to us about anything. And we would be like, Oh yeah, we have a book about that. Or we have this pamphlet or, you know, and so uh, we definitely, you know, didn't uh, guide people in their decision-making, but certainly created a space where people could come in and, and find the answers to their questions to help them make an informed decision. Yeah. yeah. And that's so important too, like within our field of sexual health, because there, well, number one, there's so much misinformation yeah. out there, uh, especially with, uh, with technology and the internet right now. And I think that stigma, yeah. you know, the, the stigma around sexual health and sexual health um, topics is, as well. And I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about that, about the stigma. Yeah. So, you know, just what you, everything you just said, right? Where um, not knowing who is, is safe to go to talk to. So, you know, um, you know, whether it's, you know, I'm, I'm pregnant and, and I want a termination, who is safe to talk to about that? Um, I am ready for, you know, uh, sex, but I'm not ready for all kinds of sex. Mm -hmm. So who can I talk to about the different types and what I'll need? You know, um, you know, I also worked in, in birth for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those decisions too, right? I, I don't want medication or I do want medication. Um, who's not going to have an agenda, right? Who will just give me sort of a, a listening ear and a safe ear without having their own personal agenda behind that. Yeah, I think that that's really, uh, I think that's really important. So you really have to do, you have to really have to do your, um, you really have to do your own research, right? And especially, uh, I think with, when we talk about um, issues in sexual health that really have a lot of, well, a lot of them is about values too, right? Yeah. So sometimes folks might not share um, might not share your your same values, or maybe it, uh, it in some cases it could be also be an opportunity to discover what your values really you know what your values. Are, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Complete. And I'm thinking. To, so so you know I I founded uh, Abortion Support Services Atlantic mm -hmm. almost nine years. Wow. Nine years. You know crazy. Um, and that was a, a large part of, you know, why it started, how it started with just this, 
this stigma of, of people being fearful to talk about abortion, right? So purposely putting the word in our title, yes. you know, being very, very clear that we're just there to help people, which is, is kind of weird in our society, right? That we don't have an agenda. And so I am completely agreeing with you about the values piece, but mm -hmm. also it actually doesn't matter if our values align. We're going to help you anyway. So even if you don't believe in abortion and next week we're going to see you opposite at rallies, we're still going to support you in the same way that we would support anybody else, right? So um, fighting the stigma through support, you know? Yeah, I think that that's, uh, thank you for that. Thank you, especially when folks are, um, are seeking these, these services and they don't know who to turn to like within their own, within their own family, right? So, and, and I've certainly heard that quite a bit or that they, they're surprised with that folks that they thought that, you know, that maybe that mm. they can go to, um, that, that they've had a really negative experience with. Um, and your experience as a clinical trauma specialist and, and your background in trauma-informed care, I, I think really, um, I think really is so important <laughs> when we talk about uh, uh, the language and how, um, and how folks are, how we communicate with, with one another even when somebody discloses something to you right like yeah. like how how we need to everybody i think needs to do a bit of a better job of making all this uh safer spaces yeah and that it's it's just universal precautions right that we we all all humans have trauma wounds you know no no human is getting out of here without one mm -hmm. um so something I teach in my classes is that we don't, well, so I don't in my teaching mm -hmm. conceptualize trauma as a event. It's actually the wound that's created by the event. And, and when we conceptualize it that way, we become safer people to disclose to, right? That, um, because it, it, it ceases to be historical or, you know, oh, that happened 10 years ago. Why are you still upset about that? Um, you know, well, this person was okay with it. Why weren't you, it, you know, because it's, it's a wound. It's a, it's a very personal thing. And uh, when we're talking about sexual health, I think that sometimes gets lost, you know, that, um, when that person comes in to talk to you about something, it can be incredibly fresh for them, right? And so yeah. we need to be aware of that. Yeah, that's a really important perspective too. And so when something happens and so when something triggering or traumatic happens, it can just easily, um, I don't want to be too graphic, but you know, like rip open that wound, right? Yes. So it could yeah. feel as, as, as fresh. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And so that person isn't necessarily making decisions based on what's happening, right? They're making decisions based in their wounding. Right. And so, you know, when you're, you're trying to help them, you know, that's why I'm like, you don't give advice. <laughs> you know, you, you yeah. don't have an agenda. You, you know, all of these things, um, you, you, you just sort of be there for the person. Like I talk about, you know, sometimes we'll throw out this holding space. We hold, and it's just a silly thing that we say. It doesn't yeah. really have any meaning, but we do say it a lot. We do say it a lot. I know. But what that really means is that you, you are that space. You are the space and, and you aren't, even sometimes doing anything, you're just there for the person, right? And that's that's from my doula background, right? That was, you know, my my birth doula training, where uh, you know that was studied. That was, you know, there's there's science behind that, right? Yeah. That 
it's, it's often not what you're saying or the great advice you're giving or anything like that. It's just your unconditional presence. Okay. That uh, makes the difference. Yeah. Cause sometimes too, I, like folks may, they might already know like their, the decision, right? Like the yeah. thing they know, they might know right away. I know what I have to do. Yeah. Right. I know what I have to do. They might know it like as soon, you know, as soon as the, the, the challenge or the problem presents itself, right? I know what I, I have to do. And I know that this is legal. And I know that this is, that this is, is going to be safe, right? Yeah. Um, but I don't know how the closest people in my life are going to, um, are going to react to that can just yeah. be so can just be so challenging and I'm thinking of of, of not just uh, about you know about birthing and, and about the the topic of, um, of the issue of abortion but in you know maybe um, you're a, a teenager and you're accessing birth con- and you want to access birth control yeah right yeah. and you know that it's legal for you to do so and you know that it's going to be is going to be safe and, and a smart and a good decision but you might be uh, afraid of going through with that decision because, or you don't, because of just like the, the immediate support, you know, like from your, yeah. from, your uh, from your parents or from, or from judgment. Do you, and speaking of, um, um, of youth, we have a lot of, uh, we work with a lot of, uh, a lot of parents here at our sexual health center. And we receive a lot of great questions from parents on a regular basis uh, about how to teach sex ed to, to, uh, to their children. And to ensure that they're making smart decisions and are going to be in healthy relationships. So I was wondering if you have any tips around that, around uh, around helping youth to make smart decisions. So, and, and we've chatted about this before. You know, I I really feel we need to move way upstream and teach kids to make decisions, right? Yeah. That um, it, and and you know, allowing them at three and four to pick out their outfits for the day and just let them wear whatever they want. Right. Um, you know, if, let them pick an activity, let them, you know, be wrong and see that it's okay to, to make a, a wrong decision. And then you just move on, right. That it's, it's not crippling. Um, and, and the, the steps it takes to, to make, a decision, right? Because I I feel <laughs> we don't teach these things to people. We just expect them to have this knowledge, and and that's often not the case. Especially if you uh, grow up with parents who maybe aren't comfortable with with giving you that much autonomy for a multitude of reasons, right? Um, you know, teachers can get on in on this, right? If if a kid can make a decision if it's not going to actually change the outcome of you know uh, their schoolwork or the curriculum outcomes let them make the decision right um because then you know and we know sorry to back up a bit we know that this the sex talk is not a one-time thing absolutely right? absolutely. So, so absolutely that also has to work into there as well right you need to be having these age-appropriate conversations their whole Always. life yeah so that when they decide to you know uh, you either try penetrative sex or um just make out with the, the person for the first time or you know all of these things go on birth control, all of these things, they will feel armed with the knowledge that they need. They're not starting from zero. Yeah. Yeah. And considering like that, the different impacts. And I think that, um, yeah. And I also mentioned to you as well, that uh, when, when I'm in the classroom uh, and I miss the classroom a lot, uh, a lot right now. uh, Yeah, I bet you do. um, That when I'm in the classroom, I used to talk about the pros and cons list. Yeah. And I decided not to do that anymore um, because it wasn't, not everything can be easily checked off as a pro and as a con. Um, it really should be more about looking at the different, the, the ways that the decision um, will and could and could impact you, right? Yeah. Like, like yeah. in looking at like different, different consequences and kind of having a nuanced um, approach to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and to circle back to the values conversation, 
Mm-hmm. You know, when you do a values exercise um, with people, and you can do this with any age, what are your values? What's important to you? Then they can connect that to that behavior or consequence or does this fit within my values, my personal values, aside from what my parents say or what my neighbors or church or friends. And, th- and I think that's another huge piece is especially at, at sort of middle school, like I'm thinking 12, 13, mm-hmm. actually helping kids develop who am I yeah. outside of those relationships, right? And then, and then they can make decisions that make sense for them and their values. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, like what, what is their identity as their individual, as their yeah. individual self and that they are not identified by, the relation, by their relationships. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a really great point. Thank you. Is there anything that else that you wanted to add on the topic of, of decision making? Decision making. <laughs> um, I, and I said this before, but really, I, I, I feel like just overall, as a society, mm-hmm. we need to teach people that making decisions that don't have the outcome you want is not the end of the world. Right? Yeah. That it's okay and it's actually a huge place of growth. Yeah. You know, we have this um like cult of of rightness, <laughs> you know, like you're always gonna make and, and that being wrong um is is crippling. And and so part of the stigma and fighting the stigma and being a safe person is also letting people know you can be wrong in front of me. And, and that's okay, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's really great advice. Thank you, Shannon, for joining me today and chatting about this. And we hope that you'll come back again in the future. And, yeah. <laughs> and, Shannon, and Shannon is with Hardy Consulting. And yeah. where can folks find out more about your, um, more about your work? So hardyconsulting.ca. Mm-hmm. I like to make it easy, right? Um, so, so Hardy Consulting, and then for clinical therapy work, um, I'm with the Anxiety and Trauma Clinic. Uh, it's in Hammonds Plains. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you want to know more about Abortion Support Services Atlantic, we're on Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. And and those uh, in Abortion Services Atlantic uh, support and services are available here in Cumberland County. They are. Thank you so much, Shannon. You're welcome. Thank you. See you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.